previously linked to version one. So this, uh, you're already at uh, NERC SIP 200 level. We're not going through any of the intro NERC SIP 100 level where we go through each one of the standards and requirements in V1, V2, and V3. Uh, but the reality is, as we know, in SIP 003, it talks about developing our policy that constitutes all the requirements and all the SIP standards. And in 008, we have our instant response plan. So absolutely, our policies and our response plan will encapsulate those standards and requirements. Uh, knowing that we've had a few, I'll just say challenges um, in uh, reading through act requirements and definitions, you want to be able to use as much at your disposal as possible to help reflect upon what the requirement is truly asking for. So. Uh, although the frequently asked questions that's available that were previously linked to version one and then subsequently linked to version two, guidance documents that are released uh, from, uh, from NERC, I mean, those are very valuable, but right now it appears to be the, the most valuable information to help uh, have some better assurity around any part of your compliance programs is the uh, you know, your violation severity levels, the risk factors associated with individual requirements or sub-requirements, and then specifically the uh, April, actually it was updated again, the mid-2008 uh, NERC guidance uh, associated with threat and incident reporting. Uh, that is the best that we really have today to help extrapolate or provide good reference, good sources uh, to justify your interpretation of the standards and requirements. And that's absolutely paramount when you're going through the audit cycle and your spot checks. You want to be able to justify your interpretation. And the more that you can use any documentation produced by NERC, produced by FERC, produced by NIST, the better off you're going to be in justifying that position. So we'll go and look at your policies and plans to figure out, well, what are you trying to uh, uh, to generate alerts for. So as an example, let's just look at your instant response plan. Uh, and we've seen a variety of plans, right? We've seen some that are very meticulous, very detailed, that have gone through a lot of modifications through the past several years as entities have had to deal with cybersecurity before compliance. Um, and they're very good. We've also seen uh, very uh, green plans that uh, you, know, you could tell that yeah, we've been great operationally in the, in the sector being able to uh, handle power events and line outages and weather events, and we're operationally to a T and, and being able to respond to the activity, but our incident, cyber incident response plan isn't necessarily as in-depth as our operational and physical security plans. But pointedly, if we were to use the uh, NERC guidance document as, as something, as a basis that should be discussed for certain types of events that will need to be uh, potentially escalated to the ESI SAC or DOE through an OE417 reporting document, they include in that NERC uh, guidance document things talking about our cyber perimeter compromise or unauthorized modification of software or data or an attempted cyber intrusion or, again, a, a failure or compromise of computer software or hardware, user control monitoring alarming. So you can read the text. I don't need to read it to you. But Pointedly, those are the things that we look for inside of a plan is something that, that feeds into it. So you can then escalate throughout your organization to then find out if it truly is an incident or not. And then, of course, you know, that, that validation of figuring out if it's an incident or not and then the reporting uh, requirements. That's what we use to figure out what we should be using as a definition of an unauthorized um, access, actual unauthorized access or unauthorized unauthorized access attempt. Because ultimately, that's what the standard requirements spell out, or, or those two words, right? Looking at unauthorized access and actual unauthorized access attempts. And we need to take that. If you haven't defined it, we need to somehow define it for you to tie your plan together with the types of controls you've put in place to meet the requirements. 